Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. <laughs> I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we are watching The Watchmen. So we've answered the question that we were going to ask in this episode. It's us. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we're we the ones it. that are going to watch The Watchmen. Yeah. yeah. Who will watch the what? We will. Yeah. That, that, that's we'll, us. we'll take that on for you guys. Oh. This has been six pack full. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking more cowbell from the Buffalo Bayou Brewing Company in Houston, Texas. You said the H. I, I'm trying. I'm trying really Thank hard. You. This is a double IPA. And I'm actually kind of, I was. It when looks I, like Mountain Dew. No, it doesn't. Um, it's got more of a pea color than Mountain Dew. But uh, <laughs> if your pee looks like this, drink water. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, when I was getting the beer, I found something that I was totally excited about. It was not an IPA, and then I saw this next to it, and I was like, "It says more cowbell." I never go to this store because we were in San Antonio whenever I got it, um, so I had to get it. Yeah, I, I, I got to tell you guys, I'm 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 just just real damn excited that you got I a double know. IPA. I'm you know you're gonna love it. I know you were thinking about me when you got this, weren't I you? I was thinking about you when I was avoiding getting an IPA. So you got a double IPA. Well, I didn't realize what it was. Whenever <laughs> I got it. All I saw was more cowbell. The other two that I had picked were not IPAs, and and I had because I had seen several IPAs I wanted yeah, to get. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, no, Mike's going to be mad if I get an IPA. And then I just grabbed this one, not even looking at what it was. Well, it, it's a 9% ABV. So if you don't like it on the first, it might keep going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. See what we, what we got here. All right. So, John, talk to me here. What are we doing? Yeah. So uh, I wanted to kind of dive into this uh, uh, famous uh, quote. Uh, who watches the Watchmen? Actually, um, uh, originally it was uh, Quius Costidit. Costi- what? Costidit? Quius Costidit, Ipos Costidos. Costidis. I just probably chopped that up pretty bad. You you were saying it in Latin? Is that in Latin, Latin you were yeah, trying to say yeah, that yeah, in? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He was saying it in Custidia, gibberish. Case Costidia, Ipsos Costidius. At least one of us like, should learn Latin. I think. Yeah. Like, like yeah. Mike said. And, and it, it really more uh, uh, directly translated to... Who will guard the guards themselves? So that doesn't roll off the tongue as well as who will watch the watchmen. Yeah, so yeah. But we, we kind of pick that up. Before we go into the modern application uh, of this this phrase and what it's come to mean, I did want to talk for just a little bit about the uh, entomology and history of this phrase yeah, yeah. and where it came from. Because a lot of people have no clue where this came from. I thought it came from a comic book. Yeah. This actually came from uh, Yuval's uh, uh, Satire Number no. 6, yep. uh, one of the oldest um, uh, plays that we have on record. Um, and, and many of, of these uh, uh, original uh, Greek uh, satires and, and, and comedies. I think this was Roman, but yeah. yeah. Uh, Ro- Roman satires, Roman tragedies yeah. were lost. And this is one of the few we have. Um, I want to talk a little bit about... <laughs> What it actually meant in the context of the play. Yep. I'm, I'm going to read here. Uh, it uses this word, uh, senati, uh, and it, it kind of meant in the time an effeminate gay male. Um, but in this context, it was more referring to their effeminateness. A, a, a better modern term that we might put in there is cuck. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I'm going to read it with that. Uh, Cucks are moral uh, contamination. Women listen to their advice. Cups should be shattered if they drink from them. Be sure the eunuchs guarding your wife are really eunuchs. Who will guard the guards themselves? Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. A uh, little, little argument there. Can, can you trust? Basically, can you trust the people that you have have guard? Make sure you can trust them. Yeah, the yeah. people guarding your wife, they they, they may dabble with yeah, themselves. Yeah. So make, you make sure you, they're yeah. eunuchs. Make sure they're yes. really eunuchs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I know, I know. I, at, at my house, I make sure that there there are people that are guarding my wife are eunuchs. That's that's my plan. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You you've got to stay on top of that's that. That's right. A lot of people thought it actually came from uh, Plato's The Republic, um, and and that's what I had heard. Well, it, he there's, re- there's some similarities in that. Yeah, yeah. He refers to similar concepts, but he never actually directly says this phrase. Um, and 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 there he's more referring to. 
keeping a watch on government. If you have a republic, how do you trust these representatives that you elect? Uh, kind of like Ben Franklin, uh, the, the, the quote when they, uh, you know, this is all probably mm-hmm. apocryphal, yeah. but they asked Ben Franklin after the uh, uh, Constitution was written, what kind of government did you get us? And he said, a, a, a republic, if you can keep it. Yeah. Yeah, kind of the same concept. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but we see when we when we look at this, who will watch the watchman phrase, that while it's been largely applied to representative forms of government, it actually applies more broadly than that. So I want to go through and talk about a couple of types of governments and how this concept can apply to them. Now, I've actually narrowed it down to three, and, and these aren't directly types of governments. These are more categories of governments. and these, Broad scopes. Yes. These categories are listed by the government's source of power how that government derives its power. So uh, the one that we're probably the most familiar with is the democracy, yeah. where the power of the government is derived from the people and their general consent. Uh, at least that's the, the idea. That's what one. it's supposed to be, yes. Yeah. Um, the, the problem with these democratic systems uh, whether it's it's more of a republic-based system where you elect representatives to go do the business of the government, or even if it was a pure democracy and you vote on everything, let's say we're gonna we're gonna build a road here and we're gonna take a, a democratic vote on it, is there have to necessarily be administrators? It, it becomes unusably inefficient. If the democracy says, we're going to build a road here and everybody in town is going to build one square foot of the road and by the t- end of it we'll, we'll have a road built. Many people aren't good at building roads. They Some guy may not show up. What if somebody dies? So you have to pick an administrator to actually do the road Your building. Your racist uncle's going to show up and piss everybody off. Yeah, he, you know, somebody may... He appears in every podcast. Yes. Somebody may make their, their portion of the road all rainbow colored and the next one's, you know, uh, you know... Camouflage, it looks horrible. Fuck you, know, you and your rainbow makes road, Anna. Piss. Yeah. Fuck you and your piss road. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> but um, so, so the problem there is these administrators have to report back either to a small body or to the people yeah. what's going on. And this really comes down to a trust issue. If somebody says, I need $10,000 for more road, how do you really know that they needed that to buy the road and they're not lining their pockets or better yet have some deal with the road supply guy where he's going to give them and there's some kickback on the backside that's hard to trace. So the question is, how do you keep an eye on those kinds of administrators? Any ideas just going into this? Surprise visits. Surprise visits. I think that would have applied to the original et- et- etymology too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise visits, you know, just... What's to do with daycare? Whenever you put your kid in daycare, you know... Maybe that's a silver bullet. show up randomly. This hey has been six-pack philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise visits. Mike? Uh, I, I, I don't know what you do. Uh, you, you know, short of, you know, just uh, having a, a very effective press to, to, to watch and keep information out there. Uh, yeah. I think that's essential. Yeah. Uh, you know, you you need that third estate out there to take care of things, or fourth yeah. estate. Yeah, absolutely. I I think the uh, the the press has been one of the the uh, solutions, or one of the the solutions thrown at the problem, whether it's solved it or not. Uh, next type of government I want to talk about is the oligarchy, uh, and this is usually a government that is ruled by an elite class, a class or a party. Yes. Yeah. Small group of people. Yeah, a smaller group of people um, where the the broad consent isn't necessary, but you still have to go through some kind of consensual process among this elite group, whoever whoever they may be. Now, the problem that oligarchies run into with who will watch the Watchmen is while they they still kind of can keep eyes on each other, um, at the end of the day a strong leader always has to emerge. Even if you're talking about something like the chair over a meeting sure. or, 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 or Speaker of the House or, or whatever this is, and there are deals going on, and it becomes very difficult to uh, know the intentions 
of people you're having to make deals with. Yeah, like uh, uh, it, it, it's very hard for the people to keep an eye on, oh, I don't know, some random number, like 535 people uh, and, and, and know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as well as that, you still have the administrative issues uh, run into. Now, because they are a small group, they are more able to keep watch on the administrators because they have privileged access to them that you wouldn't necessarily have in a democracy. If you gave everybody open access to an administrator in a democracy, they would just get so tied up in red tape, a road would never get built, you know? Yep. Everybody's trying to figure out everything. So... On the oligarchy. Go ahead. I, I was actually going to argue the other way um, because I think one of the things that you end up seeing is similar to the bystander effect whenever somebody is injured or there's some sort of uh, terrible activity going on and everybody expects everybody else to um, be the one to jump in and solve the problem. I think um, another issue that you experience in the democracy situation is more along the lines of if you give everybody access to those administrators to watch over them, everybody expects that they don't have to themselves because every other people are already doing it. Well, and, and another issue you run into with democracy is the cries of the uneducated, right? Yeah. Um, you know, you say, I need $10,000 for these road supplies, and they say, oh, that's ridiculous, $10,000 for road supplies. You, you could do it with $100, having never built a road, having no idea what it takes. Uh, I can't tell you, you know, with, with my party work, how many times, uh, I've, I've, you know, put something out there and then had this one person send out this email blast to tons of people talking about how this is a clear violation of the law and I, and, and, and people need to go to jail and just making these huge claims. I go and I look at it and they reference, you know, maybe something that doesn't apply to us or, 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 or reference something wrong, and I have to go in, and now i got to explain to 40 people who, who maybe all saw this, and now they're, they're all up in a tizzy that, okay, no, this section of election code is what applies to us here. Yeah. And, and it's the cries of the uneducated that you know, end up taking a lot of time yeah. of, you know, to, to get through that. Whereas with the oligarchy, you can really educate this small group of people mm -hmm. around these issues. Yeah, it's a lot harder. You have to harder. trust that small group of people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, the last one I want to talk about is the autocracy, and and this more or less takes that small group of people and consolidates them to a single person. If a you, very small group of people, one. Yes, yes. Um, if you heard us last week or saw us on YouTube last week, we talked about the uh, uh, absolute absolute absolutism, and that's really you know kind of the government system we have here. Um, absolutism has its own thing. We heard about. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm going to say this wrong. You're going to correct me. I think it was King Louis who had all of his nobles come move. Louis in. 14, yeah. Yeah, okay, I got it right. Nice. Uh, had all of his nobles come move into the house because he couldn't trust anybody, or at least he felt he couldn't trust anybody. Yeah, had to watch them. On the other hand, we see later with the development of the constitutional uh, uh, monarchy. monarchy where they invite monarchs back, but they don't trust the monarchs. So they, they, they kind of have them sign this, this constitutional agreement. Um, but th there's, there's this kind of, you, you really start to see the separation of the head ruler from, uh, uh, or a class separation, not, not a physical separation, from, from the, the people they're ruling over, as well as the administrators in their own group, and, and a, a strong distrust there because they are completely they, – they both have to maintain an air of complete rule, and they are completely reliant on the people around them, mm -hmm. um, which, which puts them in a, in a very precarious position. So I want to talk a little bit about our modern system because we kind of have a mix. Mm -hmm. we, we have a mix between a democracy and an oligarchy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've argued many times that, that we are actually in an oligarchy. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we're an elected oligarchy, but, yeah. but, it's, yeah. but it's an oligarchy. Yeah. yeah. So the way that we kind of exercise our democratic muscle in the oligarchy is that we elect the people who form the oligarchy. But this creates a serious problem that many states have tried to solve with various election code, uh, we're seeing problems right now with electronic voting machines. 
how do you trust that such a large vote is uh, uh, actually what happened, that these, this is really what was wanted? And beyond that, can we trust the general voting process as a good means of oligar- oligarchy selection? Mm-hmm. Um, what do y'all think? I mean, we, we've seen a rise in distrust of, of elections. Do, do you think this is... A real problem? Do you think it's something kind of blown out of proportion and imagined? Uh, yes, and both. Yeah, I, 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 I think it is a real issue. Uh, you know, we, we we see it more in where it's actually easier is in smaller elections mm-hmm. uh, to, to to do this. Uh, it election fraud is easier at a local level than it is at a, at, at a national or state level. Yeah, uh, largely because at the national or state level, it, it gets so watered down that it's, it, it it gets lost in the statistics. Yeah, um, you have to coordinate so yeah, many people across yeah. so many locations that it becomes. Impossible. Which is why I answer that question with yes, it's a real thing, and it gets blown out of proportion. <laughs> you know, okay. um, so yeah, that's kind of where I am. Yeah. yeah. All right. One other aspect to this, we, we've kind of talked about this in the frame of reference of governments in the way of the people governing and how they govern. But one place where this has really been kind of brought out as a battle cry is law enforcement. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There has been a massive uh, increase in in people watching the police in the yeah. last, yeah. Uh, you know, in, in, in cop watch over the last oh ten years, I'd say, yeah. really, really, really strong. Yeah, and you know, one of the 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 early ways that this was averted, I, d- I do want to talk about body cams and and more more modern discussions that are going on, but one of the early ways that this kind of stuff was averted is we took absolute power out of the law enforcement's hands and only gave them really the power to detain and to act in emergencies, but then handed over the power of decision of was this actually a wrong act to citizen juries. At least we've done this in in most Western states these days. So my question is, have citizen juries been effective at watching the Watchmen? Have they been effective at watching the Watchmen? Um, that's a tough word word to use there. I, I I I think I think they've been greatly improved in watching them. I mm-hmm. think uh, I think we've seen less of of the the uh, abuses of power than we used to see. Uh, and you get this weird situation where you're trying to judge the effectiveness of something, mm-hmm. but your tool for fixing it is we're going to expose you. We're going to expose the, the criminal elements. So we're more exposed to it than ever because more people are watching them. But I think less is happening because people are watching it, if that makes any sense. It less is happening, but we're more uh, we're more aware of it because of the constant cycle. Uh, okay, I think I, I, yeah. I think I, I see what you're saying now. Well, and I I think it's actually hard to determine how effective it is because we are in the middle of it. Um, we've seen a steep rise in people watching police activity, um, and particularly in recording and critiquing police activity. Um, We've, we're also still seeing um, police activity that the general public believes is criminal in which the people committing those perceived to be criminal acts, I, I use that phrasing because they are found in, typically in grand juries, not to uh, be worthy of moving on to an, an actual criminal case, um, but that these people committing the perceived criminal activities are not suffering any consequences. Um, I think you could make the argument that this, uh, this watchman mentality is not being affected because they are still getting off. Um, I, I, I think, I think if you're going to make that argument, you have to assume that the jury, which has more information than we do is wrong. If the jury dismissed it, 
you know, that's that's how the system works. Mm-hmm. They're if, right. If, yeah. You assume they're right. Yeah. Well, no, no. I, no you assume I, no, the no, jury's I, wrong. I, I think if you're making the argument that, uh, you know, that 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 it's not that working, it's not effective, it's yeah. not effective because they're they're not prosecuting. They're not they're not you know the, the cops <coughs> are getting away with it. It's not effective. Okay. You're I making the so. argument that the jury is wrong when they hear the case. Yeah. Because they're hearing it and then they're dismissing it. Yeah. So um, I think that argument can be made, um, but. One of the other things is, I think, from my own perspective, that we're starting to see more often that they are being prosecuted. Um, yes, we're still seeing a lot of instances where those officers are are getting let off the hook, but we're also starting, I think, to see more where they are being held accountable. And we're just smack dab in the middle of this shift, and I don't think that we can... Uh, measure the effectiveness of this particular tool yet. I, I'm going to disagree with you. I think I, I, I think I think that uh, any any look at the facts, you have to look at it and you have to say there is less law enforcement violence now than there was before. And I'm sorry, there's less less lynching than there was in the age of Jim Crow. That's something has been effective. Yeah. Something has been effective. Now, is it is it done? Hell no, it's not done. We, mm-hmm. You've got to keep going, and that's part of the that's part of the characteristic of watching the Watchmen is you have to keep watching them. Yeah. But I think it it, it is it's stretching the strains of credibility to say mm-hmm. that it hasn't been effective. Well, and and I think maybe we're defining effective differently. Okay, how are you defining it? Uh, that it's it's solved. That we have figured out the silver bullet to making this not an issue anymore. Yeah, no. I, obviously, that's not the silver bullet, and it's not solved. But I think it is vastly improved. Well, and I would have to I would have to agree, kind of, with Mike here. On I would on say his, it's improving. Okay. I, I would say it's improved. I mean, let's go back before Jim Crow. Let's look at at a time when citizen juries. Uh, weren't really a thing. I mean, let, let's go back to, to 1500s England. Uh, w- and, and what did the cops get away with there? I mean, Whatever they wanted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and Cops were the military, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, th- I think you can... And, and you talk about being in the middle of it. I think we can look at, at early 1900s America when we did have those Jim Crow problems you were talking about versus 1600s Europe. And even at that... That was improved. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I think we can argue improvement. And well, but the question is, has this cop watch mentality been the thing that improved it? Well, and no, it was, it was citizen juries. For, for, yeah. Are we, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I guess I missed that. Yeah. I, yeah. I, and, and, and I think, I, I, again, I think, I think it has improved. Uh, uh, not done, but, but definitely improved. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The next thing I do want to get to, though, is is kind of the the cop watch stuff. Um, the the question is, uh, we've seen a huge push uh, from citizen groups to require cameras. Um, you know, I I was watching a documentary on this, and they they I don't know if this is completely true, but I think there's validity to what was being said. He said it started with a Rodney King video. And since then, this I think I- that definitely spurred. Yeah. Yeah. Since then, this idea of of filming cops has just kind of taken off. And while uh, uh, citizens um, are 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 filming cops at at a much higher rate, um, there's actually been a move to not only require to to not only have citizens film cops, but require the cops to film themselves and keep that evidence available. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's the next thing I want to talk about is that information, the body cameras, the filming cops, you know, all that, has that been an effective solution to the problem? I th- I'll take all of my comments from earlier and insert them here. Cause that's what I was referring to. Sorry. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's helped. I think you're, I think you are less likely to do things if you're on camera than you are. Uh, if you're not now, I will say, this is, I'm, I'm going to go a little different here. I think the effectiveness is going to drop off at, 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 as, as, as we uh, as we have more and more cameras, and it's just the fact that that we get used to it, and it's not going to be nearly as as effective whenever, you know, uh, it's not something new anymore. And um, see, I, I would 
disagree with that because one of the arguments that we see time and time and time and time and time again whenever there is an incident of um, use of force where you'll hear people saying, well, that's just one perspective. You don't know what happened before the yeah. incident started. Um, you know, you don't know what led up to that. Or that's just one particular camera angle. And I think the more cameras that are out there, um, when the cop is recording from, say, the moment that they turn their lights on, or maybe as some uh, some departments have it, that they are running all the time, um, <clears throat> And maybe you have somebody across the street this way that's recording and somebody nearby that's recording and you've got these angles because the video doesn't lie. No. It may not portray everything that happened, but the video doesn't lie. And the more angles that we see, I mean, we talk about all the time how there are two sides to every story and there are angles to a an incident that's happening. And I think that the more videos that we have, the more effective that it will be because I, we can I, see what I, really I, I, happened. I don't, I don't disagree with you with that. My, my statement is I think the effectiveness of stopping people from, from, from misbehaving is going to go down. Because, because they'll because get numb to being on camera? You get numb to being on camera, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think about, uh, you know, I, I, as a school teacher, when they put in they put in web filters years ago to, to, to prevent people from doing things mm-hmm. and, and started recording everything you put on the Internet. And for about uh, six months to a year, you know, it really slowed down kids from going and looking at the wrong thing because they knew mm-hmm. there was a record. And then they just got used to it and they don't care anymore Yeah, because there's numbness to it. I well, think the same thing happens with cameras. There's, there's a numbness to it. Well, um, and I think it depends on whether or not you're experiencing real-world consequences because of it. When, even though they've been around forever and ever and, and there are cameras everywhere, you're still losing your job if you do a, a dick move violent thing. Yeah, yeah, well, then I think that it is going to continue to have that effect. Um, but maybe, if maybe. if people stop caring about <laughs> that's this what I think will happen. Violent behavior, um, and I think that's something different. Then, yeah. Well, and and you know, you you you've kind of between the two of you raised two different points that I want to kind of circle back to. One is is diminishing rate of return. I, I think economics will just argue that anything has a diminishing yeah, rate of yeah. return. The original video of Rodney King. Was was a huge like oh yeah, yeah. thing shook the world. Now yeah. if there had been a second angle, I'm not going to say it wouldn't have had additional value, but would it have been equally again as valuable as the first one? And then the third angle, and I think I think as as we get to that, at some point there is at, at some point at the at the very beginning, diminishing return starts kicking in on mm. on, on on where it's useful. I can remember uh, when O.J. Simpson's uh, verdict happened. O.J. Simpson was running away uh, in, in his in his white Bronco, mm-hmm. uh, sitting there watching the television for hours as, as 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 he's running there. It was the first time I'd ever seen a, uh, a a cop chase on TV, and everybody in the world was watching it. Now the cop chases come on TV, and I flip to the next channel because I don't care because there's yeah. so many of them. Yeah. You know, kind of the same thing. Yeah. The, the other thing I want to talk about, I wanted to talk about was sensationalism. And I think that really plays into this question, both in the jury angle and as well as the uh, camera angle, as well as the counter movement angle. So you mentioned how it's gotten better, but it has been blown out of proportion uh, because, you know, every time you hear it, there's somebody, you know, this is the worst thing, or it can't be the worst thing ever always, and, yeah. it, unless it's getting way worse, which I think evidence would show it's not. But I think the other side of that is juries, whether it be a, a, a social justice war, warrior type jury or an actual jury, um, at some point becoming numb and even taking their stances along their political or socioeconomic lines to line up, you know, in, in a certain way, have people generally been effective watchmen when they're put in the position? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what the answer is, though. But, but yeah, it, make, it makes sense to me. Um, I don't really have an answer for it. I, I guess, no, the question didn't make sense to me. Okay, so, so my question is, a video comes out, mm-hmm. and it shows, 
you know, we'll, we'll go with the stereotypical one. It shows some white cops uh, uh, hitting a black guy, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, and all of a sudden you have the police supporters and they're all saying, well, you don't have the full story. Mm-hmm. You don't know that he was like whooping all five of their asses just yeah. five seconds before the camera came on. Mm-hmm. And then you have the civil rights activists and the comp watches and they're saying, it doesn't matter what the story was. It doesn't matter if he had a gun that was off camera. They shouldn't have hit him like that. Mm-hmm. And they're all lining up along their, 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 their yeah. preconceived notions um, which I would argue in both cases is ineffective watch watching o- over your government. Um, we see this in, in trials where prosecutors give poor arguments seemingly intentionally to defend cops. We also see where, where sensationalized juries are ready to hang somebody and it, it doesn't seem to matter what they could present. And so my question is, are humans effective watchmen even when they're given the tools to do it i think there's an ability um but i think that certain emotional tools can be employed to diminish their ability to be good watchmen. i i I think i think we oftentimes willfully give up that right uh, I think about uh, like like FISA courts, where we we are we where we as a nation have willfully given up the right to be the watchman. So mm-hmm. we, we don't care. We don't you know we're just, just going to let things happen. Yeah. Uh, you know uh, we had a we have we have we had a right to privacy and, and warrants, and we went no, it's okay. Uh, so, so that that's an issue there. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I am going to be moving on. First, I want to talk about some non-governmental groups. Uh, and then we're going to get into computers, okay. spying, and all that. But before we do, want to rate the beer? Yeah, let's rate this beer. And I really want to go last. You can go last? Yeah. I'll go ahead and go first. Um, and, and I'm sure you're going to disagree with most of what I'm going to say. I can almost guarantee I'm going to disagree really? with you. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll go ahead and give my rating right out of the gate. I'm giving this a 2.7. I don't think it's a bad beer. I actually enjoy it. However, the reason it's not getting any higher to me, it says it's a double IPA, but as I taste it, it cannot decide if it's a double IPA or a barley wine. And and that to me is, is you know, it, it needs to pick one. Mm. On the front end, it comes in smooth and creamy, and then the hops hit, and you're like, that's an IPA. And then it, those hops, they have a sharp drop-off. And you can really taste the alcohol. You can taste that this is a 9% ABV. And, you know, I start to get on the back end that that hollow, maybe not hollow, it's not hollow, it's a, it's <clears throat> unflavorful, strong, you know, p- punch aggressive. you in the face, aggressive alcohol flavor. And I'm like, well, now it tastes like a barley wine. And... The, the combination of those two, I think you probably have two really good beers in this can that you could use either one, but the combination of those two just does not work uh, the way that I think it, it should. So, 2-7 for me. <laughs> All right. Madam Mistress. <laughs> I think that it's been long enough since you've had a barley wine that you've forgotten what a barley wine tastes like. Um, a, a barley wine is much sweeter and richer and a considerably higher ABV. Fist, well, it, it is a higher ABV. Fist Cups was not all that sweet. It, it, it was very strong, very in your face. And recently it was being served at... Uh, at um, I really like the Fist Cups. Fist Cups so, is good. That one is very yeah, good. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. I think this is an excellent brew, and I'm totally just flashing my notes from last episode. Yeah. Um, anyway... Uh, I, I think it's an excellent brew. I've, he just flashed our audience. Yeah. Yes, I did. Um, anyway. Uh, That's going to get YouTube views now. You know that, right? Lovely. Okay. Um, I, I, I've really enjoyed drinking it. Uh, one of the notes that I made about this beer early on was that it, it's got a classical hoppy bitterness. Um, one of the critiques I had for the beer in the last show was that its bitterness was more along the lines of like something that had gone bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is distinctly hoppy. However, what I like about it is that it still has a grain characteristic to it. Um, sometimes when something is excessively hoppy, it tastes like you're eating green. 
Like, like you went and grabbed a handful of, uh, of grass and just munched down on it. Um, but despite the fact that this does have a, a strong and in my opinion, pleasant hop characteristic, it's also got some, some grainy background to it that makes it a more balanced beer in my opinion. Uh, with that, I think it does reach the level of a double IPA. I don't think it tastes anything like a barley wine and I do think it's fantastic. It gets a three from me. A three. So we got a, 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 Two seven and a three right now. Uh, as off as your description yeah. was, John, I'm surprised that our ratings are so close. All right, so um, this is a tough one for me uh, because I, I, I'm I'm trying to be fair, and I do not like anything about this beer. Wow, uh, it's, nothing. It's, there's nothing I like about this beer, oh. but it's not my beer, and, right. and and that's why I'm I'm trying to be fair. To me, it tastes like pine needles. It's, it does not have really? a it does not have a good flavor at all. I think the alcohol is is overpowering in it. Uh, uh, and it, the alcohol to me tastes like it's alcohol just to be alcohol. It doesn't. It, it's it's not there to add to the flavor to me. Uh, I'm, again, I'm not an IPA guy, so right. it, it, it's way too hoppy for what I want. Uh, the alcohol level is a little high. Yeah, uh, I, I don't taste the barley wine comparison at all. I I've. I really enjoy barley wines, and, and there's just there's there's nothing in here that I like. That having been said, I'm I'm I understand that your IPA people are going to like this one. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a favorite IPA for people, but I think it's going to be a an IPA that that, that you're going to enjoy if you're if you're that kind of person. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if if you usually like my like my uh, my ratings, you are not going to like this beer. Um, I just I, I if I was rating it just for me it wouldn't it wouldn't even reach the two level it would it would be a very low beer it would be a one something uh, mm-hmm. but I'm 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 trying desperately to be fair to this uh, I'm gonna go with a two o uh, for for this beer um, okay which is 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 higher than than I really think it deserves but but again uh, it, it's just a matter of fairness for it. So it's like a two six on average. Some, I don't know. Yeah. If, if if you want your beer to taste like pine needles and ass, this is your beer. Otherwise, you're uh, you know go 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 get something else. In my opinion. Yeah, I um, I will agree with you that this is IPA enough that it, for people who don't like a a, a beer with a high IBU, um, they won't like this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so, so not, maybe not a bad beer, but, but I, you know, but, but definitely not mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, lawnmower That's beer. That's getting into the, into the post, by the way. Pine needles and ass. Pine needles and ass. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, uh, uh, is, is this a lawnmower beer? No, 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 this is not a lawnmower beer. If you try to drink this beer while mowing your lawn, you're going to end up hedging your trim or, or, or trimming your hedges with, uh, with, 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 with a lawnmower. Oh, wow. Uh, this is, this is, this is not good, uh, for that purpose, so. All right, so date beer. I'm going to put this at a at a number three. Uh, first of all, it, it seems to have a widespread on how much people like it. Mm-hmm. So you, you don't want to gamble on it. You don't want to go number one. Um, the other thing is, this is not your big. I'm going to impress beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to find out something uh, by giving this beer. But here's the kicker: why it gets so high in the deck on on number three. It's got a great name. It's a conversational beer. You can yeah. bring this out and you can have a laugh. You can bring up the the the, the video with uh, with a uh, 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 Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Saturday Night Christopher Live. Christopher Walken. And uh, God, so who was the guy playing great. the cowbell? Will Ferrell. Will yeah. Ferrell. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, I think this the, that this uh, serves that purpose well. But because it is a riskier beer, I cannot put it at the very front of the deck. It, yeah. it, it just occurred to me, this beer tastes like Will Ferrell looks in that video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, that's an appropriate name for it. So I think this gets you laid if earlier in the night somebody's like, you know what, I really like IPAs. Um, I'd really like to gargle pine needles and ass. <laughs> Don't gargle your beer. That's the problem, Mike. <laughs> Damn it. I gotta disagree with you. I think this gets you laid anyway, but you just gotta give him three. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there is that. So, so you want to be careful of the I, I, uh, the ABV level on yeah. it. Um, as you'll notice, I was trying to say IPA, not yeah. ABV. It is kind of stout, not in the type of beer way. It's strong. It is strong. Um, 
But so I, I think if somebody's like, you know what, I really like an IPA and you can pull this out, I think it will be impressive. Um, and and not necessarily entirely because of the beer itself, but I do agree the cultural reference, especially um, for anybody who loves Saturday Night Live, um, if you pull this out, it will impress and I think will um and the can's Definitely. pretty cool. The can and is cool. Um, you it know, it does look like a monster, but you know it's. <laughs> yeah. And something I just realized: uh-huh. if you bring this beer out and she doesn't get it, turn around. Yeah. Walk the other way. She is too young, bro. You can probably Damn. drink this one out of drink this beer like at the beach and not get arrested for having an alcohol because it looks like a monster. So you know that is true. Uh, that is true. So. Um, but yeah. So anyway, I think this will do well. With the right audience. So don't pull it out for somebody who likes blondes. Beers. Um, <laughs> but say, I love blondes. Yeah. yeah. And that's why yeah. you exactly. guys gave it a bad rating. And brunettes yeah. and redheads. And, yeah. um, but yeah, so don't bring it out for somebody who likes a blonde beer or, or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, don't bring it out for somebody who uh, maybe doesn't like comedy. Or if you, you know, if you want to sleep with me, don't bring it out. Push you out of your chair. Shut up, woman. Okay. <laughs> hey, I'll stab you. <laughs> she will do it. All right, so that- I'll explode you. Remember, I know how to make explosives now. All I right. shouldn't have said that out loud. Do, do not give the recipe on the show. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Um, so that has been uh, more cowbell by the Buffalo Bio Brewing Company. Bayou. Bayou, Bayou. Bio. The Buffalo Bio. It's Bio. Bayou. Lord, Lord, Lord. That's All a right. silent one. Anyway. So we are back to our show, Who Watches the Watchmen? We are. We are. Yes. And, you know, a lot of this show has focused, and, and a little bit later we'll focus again on government. But I did want to talk about private institutions for a little bit because this problem actually goes sure out does. further than government. So the, the Are you kind of referencing like the Facebook info gathering and I'm not at all stuff? actually oh, okay. not at all but we can talk about that okay uh, where what, what I thought was most relatable to people uh, to most relatable to the most people I'll say is your bank oh okay yeah so whenever you have this weird relationship with your bank mm-hmm. where you go and you give them all your money and they promise double promise that they will give it back to you later. And a lot of times people have to... When I went, we both sliced our hands and got the blood and mixed it up and we shook hands. Yeah, and exactly. Things. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's... We spit in each other's mouths. <laughs> you don't want to know what I'd do. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah. For our listeners out there, if you think you know what John did, go ahead and post... No, don't do that. Don't do that. But yeah, go ahead. Post what <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, anyway. It'll be great. Um... But, so, you're, you're giving all your financial assets, sometimes at a logbox, so sometimes irreplaceable, non-monetary type yeah, things, yeah. Uh, your money, your mortgage on your house. How many people here can, if all of a sudden tomorrow, the bank said you owed them double in your mortgage, could produce all the records that they need to show... That they made every payment and what the original amount was and all that. I mean, it, how many? It, it would take a while. It's yeah. much better with online banking now. Well, but you're trusting them even in that yeah. instance to report everything. That they're in control of what's yeah. in the. I mean, I guess I was. Delete, <laughs> delete. I mean, if you're looking at your statements, yeah, it was kind of my thing, but yeah. So you know, on that, you know, we we tend to turn an eye toward government, but there are plenty of businesses that are based on a trust-based business sure model. Mm-hmm. So my question is, is a trust-based business model an effective watchman system? You know, it, 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 it has been for the most part. There's always going to be problems, but, but you know, uh, sometimes when everybody makes money, it, it, it keeps people honest. Uh, and and that, that seems to have been, been true for the most part. Uh, now again, there 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 have been issues. I think about. Uh, I was listening to during, a podcast. The election. I was thinking about a podcast on, on. I listened to the other day called Breaches, where they were talking about the Yahoo oh, breach. That sounds good. Uh, it was really good about the Yahoo breach uh, a few years ago, where where you know we trusted Yahoo back back in, back when Yahoo was 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 first was starting off was the thing. You know, uh, a lot of us had Yahoo accounts that we've forgotten about, and they're still yeah. out there. And sometimes. 
they've got our, you, you know, you, you could use that account to uh, to get password information for stuff. We've trusted them with everything. Oh yeah. Um, and you know, it 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 had it had some serious issues with it. Um, I should see if I that's how, get into my Yahoo. That's how account. Russia ended up getting a. Uh, uh, a lot of their their breaches apparently was through the Yahoo breach. Well, and and you know that's an interesting point because there have been a large number of breaches. We can talk about Facebook, and that wasn't really so much of a data breach as it was. Yeah, I wasn't even re- referencing it as a breach. But. As it, as it was, was where gathering information and yeah, they, they've been it. gathering information, but it was in in it was against the Facebook terms and conditions, and then Facebook went to them and said, "You got to de- delete all that," and they said, "We did." And they said, okay, cool. And that was kind of the end of it. They kind of trusted them. Yeah. Came back, found out that they hadn't deleted it all. Um, but there have been a large number of breaches. So let me kind of throw it back out at you. And, and uh, 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 a more uh, modern one that people have already forgotten about, if you look at the... Um, it was uh, Equifax. Yeah. yeah. Equifax le- leaked like everybody's social security number. Yeah, wasn't it like three and four people? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it, it was huge, and even for that one that didn't have their social security number leaked, there was metadata on them that was leaked that came yeah. out in a second release. Yeah, people have already forgotten about it. So, is it really the case? <laughs> I can get the, remember Ashley Madison when it when it. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 On and on. I mean, we see this two, three times a year. Yeah. So, is it really the case that the the market's been effective in this? Or is it just the case that we care less when they do it? Well, I think I I, I think that there's just <coughs> uh, we at least think there's security in mass, and and there kind of is. There's so much information out there that 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 most people get lost in it. Yeah. Uh, you know, the the Equifax thing it leaked everybody's information. So what are the chances that they're going to come for you? Yeah, you know what it I'm leaked saying? hundreds of millions of people's information. Yeah. And I'm going to be the one they pick on? Yeah. Well, and, and that's an interesting thing because economically, we seem to be more worried with relative wealth than absolute wealth, right? Yeah. So we would seem to care less if the whole world all got robbed of $10,000 than we would if only I got robbed of 100 yeah. Because now I'm hurt relative to everyone else, but if everybody's poor with me, well, we're all in the same boat. It's okay. Yeah. What's yeah. Some- well, and I think that kind of makes sense, though, because if we're all up here, for those listening, my hands are above my head, and <laughs> you should watch on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, you should. Why MC? I'm sorry. <laughs> if we're all up here, and then like some great burning of money happens. And then we all come down here, like, the economy is going to adjust. And we'll all be rel- in relation the same. Yeah, we yeah. all proportionally still have the same thing. Um, Except whereas for, when you get robbed, you proportionally have less than and the you economy did does, the economy doesn't adjust for, for you, you, but yeah. it adjusts for everybody. Yeah. Except for one guy who gets super wealthy. Uh, we could call that guy <coughs> the Federal Reserve. Well, there's that. Just, uh, just to throw a name out there. Mr. Reserve. Mr. Reserve, as F we call Reserve, him. Yes, yes, F Reserve. Um, but, but yeah, so, I mean, that seems to be where we care. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't matter that one guy got rich off everyone else. As long as everyone else kind of had the same thing happen to them, we can, we can cope with being less wealthy than one person by a lot. We cannot cope with being a little less wealthy than everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that's that's a, an interesting human psychology, as well as an interesting question about trust systems in general. Yeah. Well, and I I think that um, you hit the nail on the head with human psychology there because I think there's an element of it where when it's just you that's impacted. Whether this is the case or not, you feel targeted specifically. And that hurts a hell of a lot more than just everybody got kind of fucked over. Because then you have people that you can commiserate with. Um, whereas if you got fucked, just just you, then it's like you kind of feel isolated. Yeah. And one of the core components of society is community and commiseration. If you were favorite words. If you were at a concert and a porta potty exploded oh, okay. and oh, got shit mind. on everybody. I was excited for a minute. I was at a 
I was at a concert and then I'm <laughs> covered in shit. Now I'm not excited anymore. And, and a porta potty exploded, porta exploded and got <laughs> shit on everybody. You would be less angry than if your best friend shit on your chest while you were sleeping. Hey, fuck you know, her, by the way. Exactly. But <laughs> don't judge me for what I'm into, David. But the point is, it's that kind of. Well, I got people here covered in shit with me, so yes, you know yeah, it's yeah. okay. You know, yeah. and I didn't have to pay them extra like I did that chick to shit on my chest exactly, earlier. Exactly. So. Exactly. She charges way too much. She charges way too much <laughs> shit on my my chest. You can make money with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you can. You Do you thinking, want a new job? Thinking about a side job? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so what? now I want to talk about... <laughs> okay, seriously. How do we transition out of I want to go shit on people's chests for money? How do we How do we do that? Uh, Tell me about people's mm-hmm. shit levels of trust for things. Okay, perfect. That, so that, I, that, was, that was bad. That was bad. It was terrible. <laughs> um, shitty? <laughs> that was shitty. It was shitty. So... Uh, I want to talk about how this applies to computers, and in yep. that, we're going to circle back around to government to some of the issues you raised. Okay. Um, and and you know, right out of the gate, we have this thing. I don't know if you've heard of it before. It's called the internet. The in in in, in inter in internet. It's inside the so net. Like okay. Net yeah. Inside yeah. of a net. So so, so that's the, in that web thing, right? It was Bill Gates' invention. Okay, it's, gotcha. it's pretty cool. I thought anyway, Al Gore. It was Al Gore. <laughs> Al Gore. Sorry. Yeah, Al Gore. That that's so what I meant. Good, yeah. Anyway, um, six pack philosophy two point oh. We're in it, and Mike agree and say the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, it is a data sharing platform. Yeah. And. There are a few places, the, the way it generally works for anyone who doesn't know, is we just connected a whole bunch of computers together, and if I want to talk to a computer on the other side of the world, I ask that, I pass a message through a bunch of computers, ask it, and it passes it back through those computers. As yeah, long as you know their address, yeah. Right. So, so nice. And, and it's really interesting, I don't want to go too deep into this, but just tell you kind of the way it works is you tell the first computer its address. And it asks all the computers it knows, do you know this address? And all those computers ask all the computers they know. And it anyway, the way it propagates is, is inefficient and fascinating. But and yet crazy fast. Kind of yeah. like the same way that rumors spread around junior highs. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're shaking your head. You, you know. I'm going to be teaching soon. And I'm... Not junior high, though, right? No, not junior okay. high. Yeah. But anyway, so the question is... There are a few places where the data distribution becomes highly centralized. Yep. And this is usually around government servers. And we start seeing features like the Great Firewall of China, Mm -hmm. the uh, uh, U.S. spying program, the British spying program, the Canadian spying program. All of these. Even the Canadians? Oh, yeah. Fuck the Canadians. All of these systems. have computers there? I thought it was too cold. Well, no, it, it's nice because it's cold, so they don't have to run fans. There you go. There you go. The only problem is sometimes they get maple syrup in them. So I didn't know lumberjacks could use computers, so I was just wasn't aware of it. Wow. Well, yeah, they can. They they play their mobile games okay. on them. Okay. And they apologize when they win. Um, <laughs> but but all that said, can you trust a network that has such choke points with the centralized units? And we've seen them abused. Yet yeah, we have. We even though we see this abused, not only abused, not only repeatedly abused, but continually abused we tend to still trust them uh why do we trust these networks and how could we fix that problem it is it a problem yeah i don't even know if it, if you can say that we we trust them I, I think there's an inherent sense of distrust there's just not a an answer for what to do about the distrust we, well we trust so, it so enough not to turn off them. the computer yeah uh, maybe yeah yeah okay okay uh, like your television with the cameras on them and stuff that you, you know, yeah, you, you know, I, I've got a, I've got a TV with a camera on it in my bedroom, you know, so I, I know you guys at home can't see this, but we bought a business level webcam and it came with a little cover that you can flip down over the face because people hack those webcams, yeah, yeah. governments hack those webcams, uh, uh, individuals all. And so you just put a, a, a piece in front of it so the light can't I have turn. a I've got a sticky pad that, that does the same thing yeah. you know I only recently actually put something over the the webcam on my uh, on my laptop and it wasn't because I was paranoid it was because I was in a web conference one day when I was I was leading a meeting and I accidentally turned on <laughs> accidentally turned on the camera and I was in like a tank top and my hair was all kinds of like 
fucked up. I looked like I was getting ready to go to bed, or maybe had just woken up. I, I like, have, this is great, guys. I have this, this fear that I'm going to be in the bathtub, sitting there looking at my my, my Facebook checking. Is that what you look at go, in the bathtub? Yes, and I'm going to go. I'm going to go on Facebook Live by accident or something in the bathtub. You know, I have on four different occasions. Now, luckily, they've they've put a countdown on there, so I've mm-hmm. always been able to cancel it first. But now Facebook has. You'll be in a group chat and you can like yeah hit the camera and go on like webcam with everybody in the group chat. And I've either been on the toilet or in the bathroom about <laughs> the shower, and I've because it's in the top right corner and so is the little bubble to close it. So I've tried to close it after sending a message and bump the camera instead. I'll see three, two, and I'll like turn it away and try. <laughs> I've always been able to stop it, but it's, it's, been, a, it's been like a, a disaster countdown every time. Oh. And then here's you know, the, it's just a matter of time, right? Yeah, here's the bad part. Not only is it facing me, but if I turned away, there's like a mirror on the other side of the wall. And then worse than that, even if I found some safe direction to point it, they know I'm in the bathroom. Yeah, like they know when they that that, that comes. You know, it's you just, put it's just, your finger over the camera. <laughs> It is that simple. Mm-mm. You know, it's just a matter It'll of time. You'll see my naked finger. It's just a matter of time until you get caught masturbating in the bathroom. I know what it is. I'm sure it's happened to people. I'm sure it has. I'm sure it has. Yeah. Uh, without a doubt. But why um, were you chatting? That's my question. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's the new... It's called sexting, yeah. John. Do people still do that? Yes. I didn't... I figured with, you know, video conferencing, so... Uh, anyway. No, because the connection's not reliable. Then Tell you us sh- why I know about then this. Then you don't. I'm curious here. <laughs> then you don't have to worry because it's an see, unreliable see, I, connection. I, I, I'm in a totally different generation because, you know, I, I'm even before the one nine hundred numbers. So you know. Really? Yeah. Those are that new? Yeah. Those. Can, uh, well, they were new to me anyway. I don't know. They might. Oh. Have, but I, I remember when the one nine hundred numbers were big. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now we just disturbing. have uh, cam girls. Now we have cam girls. Yeah. 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 I uh, I make a little bit of side money on that. You're a cam boy. I'm a cam girl. He's a producer. He holds. <laughs> he holds. He holds the boom mic. Oh my goodness. Uh, so we were talking about um, trust in the yeah, data and we the things. We we have an interesting protocol, and and we've talked about it here and there on the show. I don't want to go too deep into it, but we have abilities with computers to initiate encryption protocols. Now it's been really interesting. The technology has been developed. It's been mostly secure. There've been a few compromises. And yet people don't even want to go through the extra step or two that they have yeah, to. Yeah, pain in the butt. Yeah, to, to do this. So Extra step or two, my ass. Extra step or two. So here's an interesting situation where we've actually found a solution to at least part of this trust problem. And yet we, we don't even care enough to implement it. So... Can we really say this is a problem in society? Yeah, I, th- I think I think it's just the apathy is there now. Where, yeah, again, it's that situation that, that we're all in this. We're all in the same problem. So. Yeah, it's who the fuck cares what I'm looking at? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, am I really going to get t- uh, ATF agents knocking on my door because of the thing I said earlier? Probably. <laughs> Probably. I'll be interested to see if that actually happens because I don't think it will. Comment below if you. <laughs> yeah. Do that. That's your right. ATF agent. If you'd like him to go visit Anna, yeah. <laughs> go ahead and call the ATF now. <laughs> don't say that. Uh, yeah, no, no, not that. <laughs> have I, you? Have you? I s- want to know that it came about because of specifically because of my yeah, comments. Yeah. Have you seen the videos of the people playing like video game tournaments, uh, and they're on the webcam, and all of a sudden police like bust into their house no. because the people playing against them called the cops and said like there's some. Oh yeah, on. swatting them. Yeah, to swat. That was a, a, a ongoing prank to swat. That is fucked up. Yeah. Well, it kind of stopped whenever somebody died, and then they sentenced the uh, person who called the cops to like 40 years in prison. Yeah. Over killing the person. That's yeah. a lot. Yep. And let me guess, the cops didn't get shit. Well, I don't. Well, I don't know in this situation really if if it was if it was necessarily warranted that the cops uh, uh, got. Well, you know what? Our what, producer is like anxious yeah. to talk over there. What happens if you you, know, you kick the door and you hear somebody's playing Call of Duty or something? Yeah, and you're, you're yelling, hearing, "Die, motherfucker!" Yeah, you know you're probably gonna you're probably gonna. Uh, I I them, understand that, but you know? still, yeah. I, I mean, so I, I don't know what happened. So, yeah. uh, which is that's what I would yell if I was playing. I guess I've never played the game, so. <laughs> You have enough rage. I think you could. 
He would probably wander off in the back of the field and be like, look at these flowers. <laughs> I, these know, are- I know that this is like a, a trope and everything in, in those type of games, but I had a boyfriend at one time who tried to get me into playing some of those. Uh, it was a it was a Call of Duty type thing, but it was a, on the PC and tried to get me into playing it. I I very quickly like would spend six hours, feel like it had been 15 minutes, and just I hated f- losing that time. Yeah. But I was the person who would just like find a, a spot and like snipe people all day long, and I just thought that was the most fun. That was me. I, I was that person, and I'm sorry. Me, me too. But it, <laughs> me too, but it wasn't a video game. So, oh, no. Uh, mine was, mine was a video game, and apparently um, people hate that person. I wasn't interested in learning how to play, though. I just wanted to snipe people. <laughs> In the game. Yeah. In the game. Uh, so I, if you'd like to recruit Anna to the military, you can, you can you can just send a message down here. She's still young enough. She can go. I'm 30. Are you sure? Not well, the then, Marine Corps, but you can go anywhere else. Anywhere else. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the last thing I want to talk about is these systems of encryption exist. Are there ways that they apply to the real world and uh, should we be using them? I'm going to give an example. Now, this is... Uh, a really low-level example that I think a lot of people are going to be familiar with, but I remember when I was a kid, it was best practice, though most people didn't do it, to have a safety word with your kid. So if somebody was going to be picking them up or something, you knew the safety word, and then you you, you could say that. So to me, that's kind of a, a, a an example of a encryption scheme, but yeah, yeah. but in the real world. Is this something that we need to be more concerned about or with with the these trust systems is can we trust information coming to us in the real world uh, uh, through these networks of people? Uh, you, you can't trust people period you, you just can't uh, so so if you got this system here you, got, you I keep coming back to this idea that we we live in this real world and you can't have a you can't have absolute security ever. At yeah. some point, you have to accept this is as good as we can get and still be efficient enough to be able to live our life and not be not be uh, just, just paranoid all the time. And I think for the most part, the trust system has worked. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I would agree with that because there are systems in which I think it is unreasonable – for us to trust certain people, certain organizations. Um, and yet we do so because the, the extra steps, the extra anxiety, which then shortens your life expectancy and, and yada, yada, that comes from not just kind of giving that trust over um, is, is burdensome. Um, it, it does make life far less efficient. Um, and, and I think that you have to do a risk analysis, say, if I trust this person or this organization with this information, um, and they turn out not to be trustworthy, what's the damage to me? Yeah. Um, and and with that, I think we just have to say, um, you know, for these particular sets of instances, um, I'm I'm just going to turn my trust over, and yeah, maybe I get burned, but it it would be much worse. My life would be worse if I didn't trust these people or organizations in these instances. You get nothing done. Yeah. 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 You guys kind of answered my last question, but you you've kind of sparked a new question. So my question was going to be: Will blind trust always be a factor in a system made by competing individuals? But Now what I'm much more interested in is, are people trustworthy? Are they worthy of that trust? Or is it just something we kind of accept because we have to? Um, That's an interesting way to say it because I would say say that people are trustworthy, but persons are not. And what I mean by that is I I don't think you can put your trust in any individual but in the great conglomeration of people, we it, 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 it trust tends to be okay. Groups are in, trustworthy. In groups, yeah. yeah. So it's funny because I have traditionally been an incredibly trusting person, um, to the point that I I was 
incredibly gullible as a child. Um, we can talk. No, we can talk you. some stories there. Yeah. Um, were were shut we're. up, both of you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, She's not gullible at all anymore. No. Um, but I've always been a very trusting person, and the more that I've started to explore the idea of trust, the more I think I realize that I just hold information to have very little value. Um, for instance, um, when I tell somebody something, I think that I hold, it's not so much that I trust that that person won't tell anybody. You just don't care if they do. But if they do, I don't see the damage that comes to me because of it. Now that's not true with all information. There is, is plenty of information, um, I I do think that trust is necessary, but um, I think there's an element of it that is the value that you place on that information that's critical there. Well, and I've made the argument many times, and there are some exceptions to this, but I think generally secrets are the prisons we build for ourselves. I think back to the story you told about the the girl that came in the pool hall and said she was allergic to chocolate. (laughs) Uh, Secrets are their own kind of prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway, that's really everything I had on on this topic. Uh, it was it was fun to look into. I, I really actually appreciated looking into the uh, etymology of the of the phrase and and uh, the what etymology. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Of the what? What do you think I said at the beginning of the show? He said entomology. Yes, which, which is, is the, the study, study of, of insects. insects. Yes. Well, yeah. The 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 entomology of the phrase. You never, <laughs> you never heard that. That's no. Uh, but the the etymology of the phrase and and the context in which it was presented that was kind of a culture shock to me. I'll say it was interesting though. Um, but uh, I, I guess is there anything we hadn't covered I, here? I just have to point out that that only only you could fa- manage to to do a show on information and work. Uh, cuckolding into it, so that was that was yeah. interesting. That was interesting. For that me. was surprising. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it was impressive. Thank it was you. Impressive. Yeah. Thank Is there you. any way you could put cuckolding hashtag on there somewhere no, so it'll so no. it'll uh, <laughs> it'll trend? I was impressed that we got three and some odd months in three years and some odd months into the show without ever using that word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. But now we've used it three it's, times. We've broken the cuck barrier. Yes. <laughs> and yet, there's another c word that we still haven't managed to say on the show. No, I'm not saying that word. Uh. I got to work it into my next show. I don't know. I'm not saying it. Yeah. It's a nasty word. Okay. How is it any nastier than cuck? I just don't like the sound of it. Okay. Okay. I got your back. It's kind of like moist. I just don't like the word. Moist? Yeah, I don't like the word moist. Moist? You don't like the word. What's wrong with moist? I don't know. It just sounds. Yeah. It sounds moist. I don't like the word. Kind of moldy? Just don't like it. Okay. All right. Anything else? You just, you yes. Know? One other thing I was going to say, if you've enjoyed this show and you would like to see more of it uh, and you would like to get involved as well as getting extra content, you can go to patreon.com slash six pack philosophy where we have different levels that you can get extra content as well as becoming a six pack philosopher and supporting the work we're doing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And uh, if you subscribe at the $10 a month level or more, um, you get access to our live videos, which end up getting you get to see us be like assets kind of ridiculous kind like of ridiculous. like you think this is ridiculous when we have a, a technical malfunction or something along those lines we just dick around until yes. it's fixed we're, we're John's over there Mike and I dick and around and, until it's fixed and John yeah. is off camera actually fixing it yeah because, um, because I don't know how and that's when Mike and I have the most fun we do we do well and, and the other thing is uh sometimes we jump in we don't do a lot right now because we don't have a lot of activity mm-hmm. on our live feed which is all the more reason to get in now. Um, but we'll we, talk to you directly. We check in, and if you have questions that you want to see addressed on the show, feel free to drop them. I'm not going to say we'll answer all of them because some questions are dumb. I don't care what they say. <laughs> That's right. There are dumb but, questions, yes. But you, you will get the chance to kind of shoot us your feedback. We may That'll talk shit to you if you ask a dumb question. Though. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that may It'll happen. It'll be all in good yes. fun, though. That's a yeah. stupid fucking question. What's wrong yeah. with you? So anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've enjoyed it, and we hope you have, too. Cheers. 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 See you next week. Bye-bye. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 